Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice, is going to be a lot like Man of Steel. Uh, it's a very polarizing film. Uh, as we've already seen, there were a bunch of critics that came out uh, not that long ago and went on Rotten Tomatoes and were talking about how, oh god, this movie, it's over long, it's boring, and it's all that kind of stuff. And... I kind of had a feeling that, much like Man of Steel, it was getting a fairly large amount of unwarranted hate. I knew right away that uh, it was going to be tough. Uh, Zack Snyder had a very, very, very difficult job ahead of him. It's going to get a lot from both sides. It's going to be a very polarizing movie. What I will say, I'll start the review off with this. If you liked Man of Steel, you're going to like this. If you didn't like Man of Steel, you're probably probably not going to like this although i did see much to my surprise there were people who were saying that they didn't like man of steel but they liked this anyway i'm doing something a little bit different this week uh i had just seen this with my wife mrs t hi and <laughs> she pities the fool <laughs> who doesn't like batman and superman <laughs> Normally, uh, when I go to see a lot of uh, movies, especially um, stuff that's opening on Thursday nights, I end up going to a late show, and she is usually asleep by that point. This week, however, it worked out nicely because she's on spring break, so she, you know, put a little bit of caffeine in her, and she stayed up past her bedtime. Yay! <laughs> but um, right out of the gate, let's say, I liked it. I liked it too. What I'm going to do with this, we're going to talk a little bit about the movie, and then I will say uh, we're going to get into some spoilers. So uh, when I am getting ready to go into the spoilers, I'll let you know because the movie just came out and I don't want to ruin it for everybody. Uh, although the trailer tried really hard to <laughs> ruin it for everybody, uh, there were a few things in there that I would have liked to have seen uh, without knowing about them, but, you know, that's modern trailers for you. As I said before, I was a big fan of Man of Steel. I very much enjoyed it. I thought that it was a nice reintroduction to the character and updating him more to current times. He was not the blue boy scout that uh, he had kind of come to be known over the years. And I also, I love the Christopher Reeves uh, Superman. I love Superman 1 and 2. Uh, I think that they're both terrific. 3 and 4 have a lot of camp value, but uh, they're not particularly good Superman movies, but I'll talk about them someday. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's get into Batman versus Superman. Ben, I uh, thought he did a terrific job as Bruce Wayne and as Batman. He was huge. Like, he bulked up so big. Yeah, I remember seeing him in, uh, in Chasing Amy, and he was this little tiny, uh, ben, you know, little Ben Affleck. And now, you know, here he is. He's just this huge buff dude, and he's, he's playing uh, Bruce Wayne Batman. I don't dislike Ben Affleck, but he does not usually make any of my favorites lists. But I actually very much liked him in this movie, and I actually didn't think I was going to. So that was pleasantly surprised. However, I had a bit of a problem when he was Bruce Wayne, and he was just walking around in his regular clothes, and his shoulders are so broad, and kudos Ben Affleck for bulking up, but... His head looked so tiny <laughs> on his shoulders, so he kind of looks like a reverse bobblehead. It does not come across that way when he's in the Batman suit, but uh, just him as Bruce Wayne looked like a Triangle Man. Kind when you of. get in a fight, Triangle Rins. <laughs> triangle Man. <laughs> And I thought he did a great job. I thought that it was very cool how they didn't linger too much on his backstory because everybody already knows his backstory. I don't want to say they glossed over it, but they showed just enough. I thought that Henry Cavill, uh, I thought that he, once again, he was very good. He played the role more or less how he did in the first one. Uh, the very reluctant hero, like he was doing what he thought was right. It wasn't that he didn't want to do anything to help people. It was just that he was trying to help people 
And there were people that were afraid of him. There were people who, uh, they just were scared of what he could do. They saw what happened to Metropolis and, uh, they were not particularly happy. And, uh, so he would go out and save people. And then there were people that were worshiping him like a God. It was a lot to take in for a guy who really was just raised on a farm, but it wasn't until Zod came down and really threw everything into turmoil that he had to step up and do what he thought was right and save the planet and even though he saved the planet there were still people that were mad at him for doing this there were people that were complaining that nothing happened in the first hour in the first hour uh there was a fair amount of things that happened i mean they showed bruce wayne's parents getting killed they showed the destruction from the first movie where uh bruce wayne was running towards wayne enterprises a lot of the stuff that they did in man of steel that people were complaining about was addressed in Batman versus Superman. And I kept telling people this. I'm like, look, uh, the collateral damage they addressed. They were world building and people weren't giving them uh, a chance, I felt. They weren't giving them this fair opportunity. What it is, is DC is just now starting in their new introduction to their world where they're making one unified universe. And they're doing now what Marvel had done done years ago but the problem is is that you have people are comparing dc movies now to where marvel is now and marvel had to build up to this people seem to forget that there were a lot of shitty marvel films before they finally got their footing right and were able to start uh unifying things and making consistently good movies and DC, they had some missteps. They had, uh, you know, Green Lantern, which was a mess. They had Superman Returns, which was terrible. And then they kind of hit gold with the uh the batman movies with the dark knight uh trilogy and they saw what marvel was doing and i don't want to say that they copied them because you know it's business it's just that they saw that there was a unification and it would make more sense to have all the movies intertwining much like they did with comic books so uh that was why they decided to clear the slate and say okay man of steel is going to be kind of ground zero and then we're going to continue from there and they're building the justice league and now we've got suicide squad coming out and aquaman and i believe there's going to be a wonder woman uh solo movie i would like to see that very much because i thought gal gadot was great i liked her a lot i know people were bitching that wonder woman should have been more amazonian should have been bigger and i don't know how tall she was i know they mean bigger as in more muscular but i mean she kicked some serious ass there was a big fight sequence and i would probably say that she kicked the most ass out of everybody yes agreed so i'm watching the movie and every time lex luther was on the screen i had to remind myself that he was playing lex luther and not the joker down to the fact that they even have that same mouth structure so that threw me off and the movie is very serious. And Lex Luthor in this movie is not. He's that goofy crazy. And I don't think it fit with the rest of the movie. Initially, I was excited with Jesse Eisenberg playing the role because I think that he's a terrific actor. And I thought that they were going to have uh, more of a turn where he was starting off kind of a little bit eccentric and then he becomes more maniacal and evil. And the way that it seemed to me was he was the character from The Social Network as a crazy multi-millionaire. And that was kind of what I felt that they were making him out to be. So while I did enjoy the movie, I had two complaints. First being, I thought that Jesse Eisenberg, mm, his role... I didn't hate it, but uh, I think that maybe uh, being a little bit more of a serious, insane, multimillionaire world conqueror might have worked better. Um, Lex Luthor in the comics was not uh, this um, over-the-top, flamboyant, crazy kid. He was uh, very serious. He was very smart and was a manipulator, except when he's stealing delicious hostess pies. <laughs> That's when he goes out and he takes them himself, and that's terrible. But when he's not stealing delicious hostess pies, 
<laughs> he's supposed to be this uh, puppet master. They did do some of that with Jesse Eisenberg's incarnation of it, but he never felt particularly menacing he kind of was more irritating i guess than anything he was manipulating things to work for him but uh i i don't know i think that they probably could have either cast him better or made his role slightly different so that was not a deal breaker i just thought that um it could have been done a little bit better my other gripe with the film i thought it was a little bit long It could have been trimmed like 10, 15 minutes. As far as story-wise, I don't think that there was anything that I would have cut. But what I'm talking about is there's little snippets here and there. Okay, well, they didn't need to show this scene of this person walking. They could have trimmed this shot, you know, a few seconds. And you trim here, you trim there, and you condense. But there wasn't any particular scenes that I would have removed. Like, a lot of times I'll be watching a movie and there'll be just some extraneous nonsense. And it's like, okay... Well, that whole portion could have been excised from the film completely, and it would have uh, helped the flow of this a lot better. Whereas with this, they did a lot of character development, and they were doing a lot of introductions. They were explaining things. There was a lot of exposition, and it was very important because this is the dawn of justice. They're setting everything up for the foreseeable future. They've got a whole crap ton of movies coming out, and this is the foundation. Man of Steel was the start, and then this is where everything is kind of getting its uh, grounding in. There were a fair amount of action sequences, and then they went into a lot of explaining things. They went into a lot of exposition. They were talking about different characters. They were introducing things, and it did slow the film down, but it was necessary. It was needed because, as I said, this movie is the foundation on which the rest of the universe is going to be built and they had a lot of explaining to do they had a lot of motivation to go over and i didn't particularly mind it actually they probably could have split this movie into two movies but i appreciate the fact they did squeeze it all into one because you're getting a lot of action a lot of info dumps and a lot of entertainment in that two and a half hours if you haven't seen the movie yet it is worth seeing it on the big screen and if you don't want the movie spoiled turn it off now because we are going to get into some massive spoilers here because i want to talk about the stuff that they're setting up for the next foreseeable future spoiler portion I was very excited when uh, they introduced the other characters that were coming into play. I kind of knew that uh, they had already cast uh, Jason Momoa as Aquaman, and uh, I don't know who they have as Flash, and they had Cyborg, and of course Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman, but seeing Aquaman was badass and unfortunately because of garbage shows like uh, The Big Bang Theory Aquaman has become a joke if you are uh, a comic book reader and you've read Aquaman you know that like he's not a pushover he is incredibly strong he's smart he kicks massive amounts of ass so I think by them bringing in Jason Momoa who is like 19 feet tall and just a monster he was great Uh, I think that he looks really good uh, as Aquaman so it was cool to see that they were introducing that and And that was something that they were talking about uh, at the end of the movie where Batman is talking to Wonder Woman and he is starting to say, hey, uh, we need to contact these other people. They're going to need to come together and form some sort of League of Justice. (laughs) And uh, I think that it was a neat way to really solidify what was going to be coming apparently next year. I didn't know that uh, it was coming that soon, but uh, awesome. I was overwhelmingly happy to see doomsday on the big screen because uh the death of superman story arc has always been a personal favorite of mine doomsday in the comics uh he starts off he's in this big green suit and every time he damages himself he grows these horns 
So like horns start and spikes start coming out all over his skin. So in uh, the movie, uh, he comes out and he's pretty much just this big Shrek looking thing. <laughs> and then as he fights and, you know, gets punched and then, you know, he starts growing more and more horns all over his body and these big spikes and stuff come out. It just it made me very happy. Instead of the uh, fight uh, with him and the Justice League all the way across uh, Metropolis, because the Justice League hasn't been formed yet, they had him uh, going toe-to-toe with Batman, Superman, and uh, Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman kicked the shit out of him. Of the three of them, she was by far the one who did the most damage. And... Uh, made me happy because i thought that uh it was nice to see her uh kicking some ass because i think that'll help if and when they pitch a wonder woman movie because i think a lot of people still think of wonder woman as the linda carter tv show very campy very corny actually i kind of see it being like how the first captain america was where it took place in the past and because this they introduce that uh, she's yes. been around for a very long time. Yes, they have already alluded to her having quite a bit of history. So I could see them instead of doing it now, doing a Wonder Woman movie that takes place in the past. And I think that would be really cool. Batman had a nightmare and it was kind of oh, right. a nightmare slash vision. And he saw the symbol of dark side. And then he had a vision uh, that uh, there was somebody who was telling him bad things were going to happen. And then he woke up. So I kind of took that more as not a dream sequence, but a vision of things to come. I don't know if this was intentional or uh, if this is something that will come into play in the future. But when Superman was fighting Doomsday and he took uh, him off the planet yay so people won't complain that he was fighting him in metropolis he actually took him out into space and he gets blown up by uh, a nuke because our government when uh, they don't know what to do there's an alien spacecraft and it's blowing everything up nuke the bastards when there's super powered people punching each other in the face nuke the bastards so they fired a nuke at him and it uh, it knocked both of them out and superman was flying around uh, out in outer space and he was all messed up and he looked a whole hell of a lot like bizarro I mean, he didn't look exactly like Bizarro, but I mean, he did have that very sunken, weird, uh, off-kilter Superman look. So I'm not sure if that was intentional or if that's just where my brain immediately went to. But I, I sat there and I went, Bizarro! Bizarro! I'm kind of annoyed but not surprised that uh it came out uh you know critics had seen it either tuesday night or wednesday night and um it got like a 29 percent on rotten tomatoes which is absolutely ridiculous that's worse than paul blart mall cop I went into this being extremely fair. Like, I was a fan of Man of Steel, but if I went in and the movie sucked, I'd be disappointed and I would say so. Like, when I went to see Gods of Egypt, I was really excited because I liked Alex Proyas a lot. I think that he's a great director, but I thought the movie absolutely blew and it was a complete bummer. So I had been waiting for this for a couple years and I was really excited to see it. And I was crossing my fingers that, okay, you know, please, please be good. And I wasn't disappointed. It wasn't a perfect film. I had issues with it, like uh, how I thought Lex was uh, underwhelming. But overall, it was way better than a 29%. Is it better than Deadpool? No. Deadpool is still my favorite movie of the year. But uh, Batman vs. Superman, I think, is a great foundation for uh, the Justice League and for the forthcoming DC superhero movies. I'll see you all next time. Bye! Bye! <laughs>